peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the United Methodist Church in Mount Vernon. We're so glad to be worshiping with you today. So would you rise? With that, I'm going to invite Nancy Riesland, our, our chair of outreach, up for a mission moment. Good morning, everyone. So we are in this process of Advent where we have these beautiful, quiet candles and we sing beautiful Christmas music and we're, we're preparing to um, welcome this precious little baby. And then he came to be a big troublemaker and a rabble rouser and a world changer. And we're called to do the same. So we have a wonderful and um, God-given opportunity before us to pray for the Super Kids Day Center in Romania. Let me give you just a little background. So in Romania, the main religion, the main church, is the Orthodox Church. If you are Romanian, you're probably Orthodox. If you're Orthodox, you're Romanian. It's hard for them to separate the two. They are very much a country of uh, tradition. There is a Lutheran presence there and a Catholic presence. They tolerate them only because they've been there for centuries, but they are just kind of tolerated. Well, in the midst of this is Pastor Christian Estrate. He's a Romanian who felt called to be a Methodist pastor. This is very new to Romania. This is world changing. This is, he's a rebel rouser, let's face it. And not only that, he was called to the city of Sibiu to minister to poor children who are, um, you know, Romania has 60,000, 60,000 orphaned and abandoned children, and they don't, don't allow international adoption. So these children need help. And Pastor Christie has come to Sibiu. He has felt called to start a day center to minister to these children. But the people of Sibiu are not really trusting of this Methodist minister. They don't know what Methodism is, and it's very scary. So in order for them to uh, entrust their children to him, um, we need to step in the gap with our prayers. So he contacted me this week, specifically asking our congregation to pray, really pray. So you, all of you, have the chance to sit in the pew this morning and be a rabble rouser, a world changer. And I'm going to ask that you take these prayers home with you and continue to be a rabble rouser and a world changer all week long as you're praying for changes in Romania, for these children to have an opportunity it's getting really cold there, and some of them really do not have good living um, conditions. So here is the list of prayers. Uh, we ask that you pray for the people of Sibiu to be accepting of the Super Kids Day Center, and not be fearful of this new opportunity. Pray for the families of Sibiu who are struggling to clothe and feed their children. Pray for patience and encouragement for Pastor Christie and the Day Center staff as they are trying to get this launched. Pray for the first interviews of families, which are going to begin this week. Two very brave families have come forward wanting to know more, and interviews are scheduled to see if their children might qualify for the Day Center. And also, pray for our own congregation as we determine the best ways to be some, uh, supportive in this very crucial and important effort to alleviate the suffering of children and families in some of you. So I invite you, wherever you are today and this week, to be a world changer in your prayers. Thank you. If Jesus comes to us again at Christmas this year, and if Jesus dwells within each of us, shouldn't that make a difference in who we are and how we live our lives? Hear these words from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, 
For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the word of prophets. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. If we seek Jesus, who was born in the manger, shouldn't we be at peace among ourselves? <coughs> shouldn't we help the weak and the poor? Shouldn't we not repay evil for evil, but always do good to one another? Shouldn't we, in all circumstances, give thanks? As we light the third candle, let us remember that this is the will of God in Jesus Christ who comes to us. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Would you join me in our opening prayer? Oh God, we come today echoing John the Baptist's question to your beloved child. Are you the one who is to come? Give us eyes to see and ears to hear the answer for ourselves. In the work of justice, Christ. In the practice of mercy, Christ. In good news for the poor, Christ. In makers of peace, Christ. Make us ready with open hearts and joyful spirits to follow in Christ's way. Well, would you join me in prayer, friends? Most holy God, we thank you for being Lord and Savior. We thank you for being our Redeemer. We thank you for being Emmanuel, Christ with us. So Lord, as we rejoice today, we're just rejoicing today. As we rejoice with music, as we rejoice in celebrating Joe and Brian's 30th wedding anniversary, as we rejoice in new equipment, um, Lord, we come to you, giving you praise and glory. We thank you for the, the way that you make for us to come to you. Lord, I pray um, just for each person in the sanctuary, I lift up all of those unspoken re requests, the concerns and the things laying heavy on our hearts. So we lay them at your feet, trusting them into your care, knowing that you are God, almighty, powerful, omnipotent, beginning and the end. Lord, we praise your name because we can trust in you. We lift up um, our families and our friends this time of year. We ask that you would keep us focused on you in the midst of the hustle and bustle, that your wisdom would speak in the midst of difficult situations, <coughs> and in the midst of joy, as that we would see you in it all. So Lord, we bring to you um, our country, we bring to you our world, and the heartache, and we ask that you would bring peace and joy and justice. <coughs> and now, Lord, we pray these beautiful words that you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Do we have any kids that want to come forward for Young Disciples time? I need as many as I can get. It'll make it, it'll make it better. No more kids. So come on up. If you're on the fence, come on down. All right. Hi, Ellie. Welcome. You can come all the way up to me. Yeah. Hello, hello. All right. So God has created all of us with different gifts.
gifts and different abilities, and we know some of them. So we're going to do a little experiment here, and we're going to, I'm going to ask you to participate. So you get to stand up if this applies to you, okay? Because we all fit. Our identity says a lot about us. So um, if you are a daughter, would you stand up? Anyone's daughter? Are you someone's daughter? Can you stand up, Ellie? I think you are. Would you stand up? All right, all right. Yes, good job. All right, you can sit down. Thank you. Uh, if you're a son, stand up. All right, good, good. And you can sit down. And if you are good at singing, stand up. We have any singers in this crowd? Stand up. All right. Good, good. All right. Do you think you can sit down? Thank you. Good job. Um, let's ask our adults and see if they have anything that they want to share with us, okay? So how about if you're a Cyclones fan? Do we have any Cyclones fans in the crowd? Stand up. All right. Sit down. Do we have any Iowa fans in the crowd? Stand up. All right. Sit down. All right, do we have any really good readers in the crowd? Stand up. Readers. Reading. Text. Yep. Awesome. You can sit down. All right, if you are a child of God, stand up. All good. Yeah. All right, we have a lot of children of God. Good job. Everybody sit down. So who is a child of God? <coughs> Do you know who a child of God is? Why did everybody stand up? Come on, people. Come on. I know you got this. We're all God's children, right? We're all God's children. So that is our identity. Is God's child first and foremost. So that was fun. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Appreciate it. Would you guys join me in prayer? I'm going to say a line, and then I want you to repeat after me. And then I'll say another line. Okay, can you do that? All right, dear Lord, thank you for creating me as a child of God. I love you. And I would like for you to teach me how to walk in your ways. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming up. <coughs> Our scriptures today are from the book of John. 1 John 1, 6 through 8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. John 1, 19 to 28. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Je Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, said, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor a prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know. 
the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the word of God for the people of God and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. So a few months ago, my family and I were taking a trip to Sioux City. My in-laws live in Sioux City. My wife is from Sioux City. So we left West Branch. We got filled up the gas tank as we left town. About 15 minutes later, we stopped in Coralville to get a bite to eat. We went through a drive through and my wife attempted to pay with her credit card, and her credit card was declined. So we knew that there was money in the bank account. We, she had just used that card to pay for gas in West Branch. So we were wondering what was going on. So she, I paid for the food, and then she called her bank. And the bank told her in that 15-minute interval, by the time from West Branch to Coralville, someone in France had used her credit card to try and purchase something. They said it was impossible for us to be in West Branch and in France at the same time. So they canceled her credit card and sent her a new one eventually. It was a case, the modern-day case of identity theft. I've never had this happen personally, maybe some of you have, but I have had my bank question certain transactions, and they've asked me, are you who you say you are? And I've had to call them back and say, yes, I am who I say I am. <laughs> to me, it seems like such a strange use of the word identity, because it assumes that our human identity is completely wrapped up in social security numbers, taxes, bank account numbers, all of those things. However, as we heard in Young Disciples' time, our identities include a variety, of, a variety of things. In seminary, we often talk about our constellation of identity. All of our identities are made up of all kinds of different smaller things that build up to who we are. We are fathers, mothers, grandparents, brothers, sisters, teachers, nurses, accountants, Democrats, Republicans, U.S. citizens. We also have identities based on race, education level, income length level, gender, sexuality, religion, so on and so forth. How we check these boxes at least partially tells the story of our lives and our relationship with society and culture. And if we're not intentional, society and culture can tend to try and steal our identities. They try and tell us who we are. An example might be, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'm fat, I'm a bad parent, I'm a failure. Have you ever had any of these thoughts, or similar thoughts? I think we've all probably had them. I am here to tell you this is not your true identity. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, See what the law of the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is who we are. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is who we are. So my question today is, how could this verse influence how we view ourselves or how we view other people? Do we look in someone else's eyes and see a child of God? So today's scripture from the Gospel of John reads like an interrogation. John the Baptist is standing before the religious authorities and he's asked, are you the Messiah? Are you Elijah? Are you a prophet? And he says, no, no, no. They ask him, who are you? What defines you? John rejects all these self-centered questions, and he says, it's not about me. Instead, he says, I baptize with water, but among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me, and I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. So John's answer is a deflection to Jesus Christ, and he grounds his own personal identity in the identity of Christ. By doing so, I believe he also acknowledges Christ's presence in all of us, whether we recognize it or not. See what the law of the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is who we are. In his own way, John acknowledges the holiness of all humanity. <clears throat> Later in the Gospel, he says this, 
You yourselves are eyewitness that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. Another way to put this might be, the love of Christ inside of me must increase so that all those worldly attributes go away. Criticism, anger, unforgiveness, regret, low self-esteem, dishonesty, envy. These things are not of Jesus Christ. He must increase, but I must decrease. In a word full of criticism, deadlines, unattainable expectations, we're not often told, you are a beautiful and loved creation of God. So I'm here to tell you, you are a beautiful and loved creation of God. We all are. There's a book that has been pretty influential in my own life, which is called Life of the Beloved by a guy named Henry Nowlin. And he writes, as those who are chosen, blessed, broken, and given, we are called to live our lives with a deep inner joy. And peace, that is the life of the beloved, lived in a world constantly trying to convince, convince us that our burden, sorry, my eyes are really bad, and I can't see that small print, <laughs> burden that is on us to prove that we are worthy of being loved. He writes about balancing our identities that are pressed upon us in the world with our identities in Christ. So, the subtitle of the book is Spiritual Living in a Secular World. How do we balance a spiritual life with all the pressures of living in a secular world? Later he writes, as the Imago Dei, the image of God, humanity derives identity from the perfect love of God. So every time you feel hurt, offended, or rejected, you have to dare say to yourself, these feelings, strong as they may be, are not telling me the truth about myself. The truth, even though I cannot feel it right now, is that I am the chosen child of God, precious in God's eyes, called the beloved from all eternity, and held safe in an everlasting embrace. This thought could have a profound effect on the way we view ourselves and each other. So last week, we, in the praise service, we sang O Holy Night. Rainy was just talking about how O Holy Night was one of his favorite Christmas songs. And it's not in our hymnals, believe it or not. Uh, but, O Holy Night has these words. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Change shall he break for the slave is our brother and his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy and grateful chorus raise we. Let all within us praise his holy name. So while Advent presents us an opportunity to reflect and meditate on the identity of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Creed, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. But Advent also presents us an opportunity to meditate and reflect upon our own identity and who we are. What is our true identity? And does that identity influence the way we spend our time, money, does it influence our thoughts and actions? Jesus Christ challenges us to serve those on the margins of society, the poor, the sick, the imprisoned, the hungry. And as we reclaim our identity as the beloved, Henry Nouwen writes, the real question is not what can we offer each other, but who can we be for one another? We are all beautiful and beloved children of God with something to offer this world, for something to offer another. So in this holiday season, I encourage you to remember that our deepest fulfillment comes from being a gift to one another. When I remember who I am, I live differently. When I remember who I am, I serve differently. When I remember who I am, I give differently and I love differently. Sometimes I feel myself buying something I don't really need. Sometimes I find myself saying something hurtful that I don't mean. 
Sometimes I find my blood pressure rising and getting angry at something really, really pathetically stupid. In all of these moments, I have forgotten my true identity, and I have forgotten our true identity. So our challenge is to resist identity theft. Our challenge is to claim and live into our status as beloved. So every time you feel hurt, offended, or rejected, you have to dare say to yourself, these feelings, strong as they may be, are not telling me the truth about myself. The truth, even though I cannot feel it right now, is that I am the chosen child of God, precious in God's eyes, and called the beloved from all eternity, and held safe in an everlasting embrace. Our challenge today is to see the Christ in others and treat them accordingly. Truly, he taught us to love one another, and his law is love, and his gospel is peace. So in this Advent and holiday season, the question is, who can we be for one another? Because as the beloved, our deepest fulfillment comes from being a gift to everyone around us. Let's pray. So dear God, we thank you for everything that you've given us. We thank you for our life, the air of life that is breathed into us. We ask that when moments are tough and we don't see it, that we know that we are beloved, we know that we are worthy of that love, that we know we have qualities that need to be shared with the rest of the world. We thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ and the challenges that he presents us to love and serve one another, to see God in other people. That is not an easy thing. We admit that people make us frustrated. People hurt us. People make us, people make us angry. So we ask in the midst of those feelings that you help them subside. And that we see people truly as they are. We ask in this holiday season that you help us to reach beyond our own and give ourselves as a gift. Whatever that might mean in our individual lives. That we learn what it means to be. To simply be for one another. And all these things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So friends, there may be a time, or maybe today it's happened, where you felt like your identity was stolen from you. Perhaps there was a time where you didn't remember that Christ is your identity, that you are a child of his. So when that happens, just remember that it's wrong. Don't let it be stolen from you, for Jesus Christ has all power in your life. If anyone needs prayer today for that very thing, or perhaps for grief, or you have something to rejoice about, or I don't know, something new has happened in your world this week and you're not sure what to do about it. Come on up, I'll be over here to pray with you. It would be an honor and privilege to do so. You're always welcome to reach out throughout the week to either Mark or I as well, because um, we'd love to be there for you. With that, go in God's peace, God's joy, and God's love. For it is in Christ alone that we receive those things. Go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.